Real estate in the ocean state. I'm Donnie Bennett from Blackstone Ocean Properties. My office is located right on Jefferson Boulevard off of the airport connector in Warwick. And as a matter of fact, coming to you today from the home office because real estate's a seven-day week grind for me. And I actually love what I do. My team and I all love what we do. And to prove that to you, just reach out to us anytime, 401-383-4400. Ask us your questions. We'll bring you the answers. That's what we do. And today's edition of Real Estate 101, which I've been doing for a long time now, the topic is five ways that sellers actually sabotage their own sale. It happens way more than you care to even believe and way more than I care to believe. Anyway, um, when selling a property, every seller has the same two basic goals up front. Goal number one is to sell the home for the most amount of money possible. Sounds simple, right? And the second goal is to sell that home in the least amount of time possible. So if we can agree on that, we can move forward with the next part is that as a real estate professional, that's what I'm there to help do. I'm here to make sure that the seller works in the right direction, and not against themselves. It happens a lot. My job as an agent and every realtor that's licensed anywhere in the nation, they have a fiduciary responsibility of obedience, loyalty, full disclosure, confidentiality, a reckoning of the accounting, and reasonable care to their client and the transaction. The other side, they just have to be fair and honest. And not everybody drives 55 on the highway, but I, I know that my team and I, we work double hard because we're just a small local company. I used to be with the big brand, and 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago, I decided that didn't need the helium to get me where I was going. So with that said, um, the two items that sellers really need to shoot for in the beginning, selling for the most amount of money and the least amount possible, those two items can be stopped, hampered, blockaded, whatever the word is you want to use, uh, by two other items. Now, you know the three rules of real estate, location, location, location. Well, these two items that could be a blockade to selling for the most and in the least time are the price and the condition of the property. The good news is, if you're selling your home, you actually control the price and the condition of the property. You've got to make smart choices up front to ensure that your home shows as effectively as possible to reel the buyers in and eventually get the right buyer at the right price and close that deal. So with that said, I'm going to give you five mistakes that sellers make, five ways that sellers actually sabotage their own sale. Mistake number one, thinking that your house is special. This one is really tough for a lot of people because they're super invested in the property, in the decorations, in the location, in the neighborhood. They're, they're just invested in it emotionally. And you have to learn to detach because people come in and they're not going to have the same love affair with that painting on the wall or the color of that room. So that's why when you go to sell your home, we always ask people to depersonalize. Take these pictures down. Get the fridge looking spotless and shiny with no sticky notes all over it. And people can't see through things a lot. A lot, of, a lot of buyers can't see through the clutter or see through even the, the, the decorations when it's not clutter, when the house is just set up in a way that's not conducive to everyone's tastes. You want to neutralize things a little bit. And, um, you know, there's that saying about snowflakes. You're very special, just like everyone else. Well, so is your house. It's very special, just like all the other ones. You have to learn to just pull away a little bit and not be so invested and, you know, hire a professional stager in some cases if you think that you've got some issues there. Or better yet, call up that aunt, uncle, or relative, or friend who's got the loud mouth and they just kind of let things fly out of their mouth. Have them come over and tell you what's wrong with your house. And then take them seriously. Don't just blow them off because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get opinions that aren't your own. And then you can kind of manage the place to bring the bad things out and bring the good things in and make it so that it's a clean slate almost for any buyer to come in there and go... This is the place. Let's buy it at the price that they're asking for or more. That's what we love to hear. So, you know, my job is to protect your best interests. And remember just one important thing. Uh, if you spent $50,000 on a kitchen, you might not necessarily get every dime of that out of the house when you sell it. So don't over-improve your house either when you're making the home your own. You know, it's great to do. I have a, uh, some folks right now that I'm aware of. They're what, they call the, what we call the white elephant on their block. They're just the most over-improved property out there, and they're not going to be able to sell it for the amount of money that they've invested into the property. So that's not a great deal for them. Mistake number two of five mistakes that sellers make or five 
ways that sellers sabotage their own sale is thinking you are the salesman. You hired a professional. Please let them do their job. Don't stay for the showings. Go away. I mean that lovingly. Don't stick around. Nobody wants to hear your stories or anecdotes about your house. They just want to come in, see if it's for them, and keep it moving. When sellers hang around, uh, I think a lot of times what I find is they're trying to make a connection with the buyers. You know, the security aspect of it's a, a different story, but you know, there are some sellers that just control enthusiasts and they don't want their things touched, but that's why you hire a professional to make sure that the rules of your house remain even when you're not there. But when sellers try to make a connection with these buyers, what I've come to find is that people, believe it or not, people are innately nice. Really, most people are nice. Because when they meet the seller, very pleasant. Your house is lovely. I love what you've done with the place. Oh, isn't this great? That's a special painting. Oh, we love that. The fire. They say all the right things because it's just like a first date. They don't want to offend you. And then when they leave, and you, never hear, you never hear from them again. You go, what happened to those nice people? They loved everything about the house. Oh, guess what? They were fibbing because they didn't have the heart to crush you in person, first time meeting you, before they got a chance to put an offer in your home. So that's why you want to take off. Let us do our job. Let the professional, whether you've hired my team or someone else, let them do their job and let them show the place because a buyer is way more likely to be honest. As I had an experience today, if the sellers of the house heard what my buyer had to say about their house, they would literally blank themselves. And um, so you don't want to have any reason to have that buyer be dishonest and when you hang around you give them a reason to be dishonest and that actually sabotages your sale and uh, mistake number three in the five ways that sellers sabotage their own sale thinking they'll come back what does that mean look um, we all have a life I get that but when you put your home on the market that is a commitment that's an, that's an investment in my time in your time and everyone else's time and just imagine you had a long day at work Maybe it's a hot, muggy day. Maybe like today, it's a very cold day on the way to the holidays, and you just don't want to have anybody over. But if you made an appointment, don't cancel it because chances are the buyer is going to pick up and go someplace else where they will be entertained. And then you'll be wondering why they didn't come back for a second. They just did not. So you have two choices when this happens. Okay, Option A, plead for the showing to be rescheduled. If you can't make it, if you're legitimately sick, if something's wrong, if legitimately you have... Uh, a car accident or a family emergency. That's understandable. But when it's just like, eh, don't feel like it today. Not good enough. And buyers, you know, they can be fickle. So option A, plead for the showing to be rescheduled because you mistakenly think that they're going to take their time to come back. Or B, option B, remind yourself that you are on a mission to sell your home. As such, you have to act accordingly. You have to make appointments and keep those appointments. So again, don't think they'll come back because sometimes they don't. And that could be the difference between selling your home and sitting on your home through the entire winter or whatever season it is. Mistake number four on the list of five mistakes that sellers make or five ways that sellers sabotage their own sale, not being willing to negotiate. Now, I understand we list a house at a certain price. Now this past summer, we were getting that price and way over it in a lot of cases. Bidding wars galore in 2017. So that's just one part of the negotiating that you have to do. Because then once you're under agreement, you've got two more stops along the way. You've got the inspection phase. Now, when you put your home on the market, you're required to fill out those seller disclosures. You want to explain or tell everything about your home that could be a problem because you want to make sure that buyer's informed. But even when people conscientiously do that, they don't always catch everything because not everyone knows every single nook and cranny of their home, believe it or not. That's why we have professional home inspectors. And when a buyer finds things that you did not disclose, they have the right to ask you to fix, replace, repair, correct, mitigate, whatever. Take care of the problem. They have the right. Or to seek some kind of compensation or reduction in the sales price, those things can happen. Don't shut them out when they bring these issues up. Let's try to you know, work with them because you have that buyer on the hook. They're ready to go. And if you just swoop out of the transaction, uh, excuse me, swoop out of, uh, uh, swoop out of the, the, the rafters and just like a hawk and say, not doing it, and you keep moving, you're going to put them off. 
by not even give them, giving them a little something, you're going to make them feel that it's a more adversarial relationship than it needs to be. And you don't want to be an adversary. You want to be a partner in the sale. So the home inspection phase could make or break the entire deal because maybe they find some things that you legitimately didn't know about that legitimately need to be taken care of. So you have to consider that as an option. And then after that, after we're clear of the inspection phase, we have the appraisal. And the certified appraiser might have some things uh, around your house that maybe the home inspector found, maybe they didn't find, um, that you need to do in order for that buyer's loan to process. Things like railings, <coughs> holes in walls, peeling paint. So depending on the nature of the loan. So you want to make sure that you're flexible because it's not uncommon for those things to pop up, but it's very common for those things to kill a transaction in its tracks. All right, and the fifth item on the list of five ways that sellers sabotage their own sale is being nose blind to pets and smoking, believe it or not. Now as a non-smoker, I don't want to offend any of my smoker friends out there. I really don't. I don't smoke. I don't care for it. I don't want it blown in my face. I'm happy when they outlawed it in restaurants and nightclubs. Made my day. Um, you're free to do what you want in your home. But when you're selling your home, you have to consider that non-smokers will be coming into your home. And there are smokers who don't smoke in their own home as well that will be coming into your home who will be turned off to that particular smell. Just about every buyer that's ever walked into a house that smelled like smoke had a comment to say about it, and it wasn't good. So just know that. And know that maybe you've got to change your habits if you are an interior smoker and you want to make sure that the home is ready for sale. And that's one of the important items. And the pet odors, that could be a hassle factory, but you've got to deal with it. And the best way to deal with it is to get a third-party opinion, have them come in, somebody who doesn't come over your house a lot. Uh, you've, know, you've been in houses where you've walked in and go, that's, you've smelled different smells, people's uh, cooking or whatever it may be, and it just kind of permeates. So you know what I'm talking about. But you just don't know what your own house smells like because you live in it. So just make sure to try and keep on track of that. So to summarize, your home isn't special to anyone but you. Keep it clean and as neutral as possible at all times. Don't try to be the real estate agent, uh, meaning be sure to leave the house during showings. Don't stick around. Take your pets with you too. And don't assume that buyers will bend over backwards or be flexible with showing times. If you make an appointment, keep an appointment. And it's your job to be flexible in the showings because you're the one trying to sell the house. And it would be wise to be flexible on all negotiations as far as the pricing initially, the inspection phase, and of course when it comes down to the appraisal. And try and keep the place free of odors. So if you follow this advice, you shouldn't have a hard time in selling very quickly and you'll avoid the unnecessary stress that many sellers have to endure because they've become their own worst enemy and sabotaged their own sale. I'm Donnie Bennett from Blackstone Ocean Properties, always looking for buyers and sellers. So please, if you just need questions answered, I'm here to bring you real answers to your real estate questions. So reach me anytime for real estate in the ocean state. That's Real Estate 101. Again, I'm Donnie Bennett. Thank you. Have a great day.